Yep, acid flow as per usual. And so I told you to focus on this bit of code right here with this data as acid. But, you know, maybe it was just because I found this example after lunch one day. Uh, I don't know, but I found this exceedingly inscrutable. I was just kind of like, I could not parse this with my brain. So, you know, when it comes to that, instead of just using my brain to find the flaw, I like to bend the knee to our AI overlords. So I asked ChatGPT, what is the interpretation of this code? Sscanf vdata, percent 127, blah, blah, blah. And it came back with extremely helpful results. Code uses scanf function to extract two strings from a character array vdata. Format string specifies how to parse it, and this percent 127 and square brackets, caret, comma, square brackets, specifies to read up to 127 characters or until a comma is encountered, whichever comes first, store the results in var name. The carrots comma means to match any character that is not a comma, so that's exclude. Of course, you could have gotten that from the man page. You just go read the, the manual for scanf, and it says that kind of stuff there, but it's much more complicated, and then you don't have this nice specificity that's given here. The comma then in the format specifier says match exactly a comma after, you know, either we've already matched on this or we've, you know, gotten 127 characters. It expects a comma immediately after if you, you know, provided the maximum 127. And then the percent %127s specifies to read up to 127 characters or until a white space character is encountered, whichever comes first, and store the results in varval. So oh, great, that's extremely helpful. And then just because I saw that this scanf was in an if statement, what does the return value of scanf signify? Return value signifies the number of input items that successfully matched and assigned. So, you know, if you might just guess, oh, it's the number of characters matched or something like that. No, it's the number of format specifiers that were matched. It returns the number of input items successfully assigned, which can be fewer than the number of format specifiers provided. For example, if the format string has 2% D format specifiers, but only one integer can be successfully read and assigned, the return value of scanf will be 1. No input items can be matched and assigned. It returns 0. Thanks, AI overlords. I, for one, welcome our new AI overlords. But uh, just in case, because, you know, you never know whether ChatGPT is pulling your leg or giving you accurate information, I did decide to just pull out just that little bit and throw it into a test program and see exactly how it behaves. So here I substituted my argv1 for what would have been that vdata, and you can see that I used little Python things to basically take uh, Python and print out 256As, a comma, and then 256As, and this is what I got. It said var name and then this, but that doesn't quite like 250, look like 256. So that's actually just, you know, 127 A's and then var val is set to nothing. Okay, but let's get back to the code. But first, check this out. I could have been using an acid Erlenmeyer flask this whole time. I just accidentally found this. Facepalm, Tweety Birds, moving on. Okay, so the local variables here, we said data is acid. Then we've got this giant buffer temp, and uh, that's a nice uninitialized stack buffer you got there. Be a shame if anything were to leak from it. And we've got some other uninitialized variables. We've got var name and var val, which are initialized to an empty string, so that's good. Then we've got uh, data tainting this telnet data. And data here, I don't even know if that's Docker controlled con. I didn't look into it because it's not relevant to the bug. Okay, so moving on. You would have seen that curl has its own little snprintf called msnprintf, which I'm going to go ahead and assume stands for magic because some of these values that it's interpolating to the percent %c are non-ASCII values like this. This is 255. So normally 255 would not interpolate into anything valid with a normal snprintf. So clearly they just want to, you know, make sure that bytes go over the wire to telnet exactly as they specify. So this is going to take four bytes and it's going to fill it in at the beginning of temp. And so now temp is semi uninitialized. It's got four bytes initialized, but the rest of it is uninitialized. Length is increased, but uh, is set to four because it was zero because this was starting at the beginning. So now there's four bytes in temp. And so length is tracking how much data is in temp. 
Then we've got a for loop, and this is going to loop however many times there were arguments, dash t type arguments passed into curl. So it's going to happen multiple times, but let's just consider a single one to start with. So this data right here is the acid data of the actual string. And so string length over whatever's passed in is going to be put into temp length. And so that then is used with length plus temp length is that less than size of temp minus six, which is the 2048 minus six. So this effectively is a sassy value. It's not fully attacker controlled. They can't make it bigger than temp minus six or really temp minus 10 at the end of the day. So that's going to be the thing from stopping them from going out of bounds. Now we get to that S scanf, and now we know that that's interpreted as 127 up to 127 characters, excluding commas, followed by a comma, followed by up to 127 characters, followed by a white space. Or not followed by, but, you know, if there is a white space, then it would stop there. So what if this V data was a simple empty string? Well, empty string would get a string length of zero, and then that's plus one temp length. It would go in here, it would do the S scanf, but essentially nothing would match. These var name and var val would not be filled in. And so it would skip this entire if because this would return zero, and then it would go down to the code below. So in a nutshell, scanf returns zero, length is not incremented because it never got into this if, and only six bytes of non acid data are sent, four from up here and then two from down here. What if instead vData was the example I gave you of foo comma four a's? Well, in that case, s scanf returns two, the length is incremented because, you know, this is a valid thing, and it's going to send a mix of acid and clean data. So the clean data is the stuff like those percent c's that were filled in, and the acid is this foo and a and four a's, which were set into the var name and var val fields. So those are going to be pulled in in this line where it takes the percent %s and we'll pull in foo there and the percent %s and we'll pull in 4as right here. But we're uberly taxors, so we don't just use 4as, we use all the as. So what if instead we sent 256 as followed by 256 as? Well, what's going to happen there? Well, string length is going to be an extremely large value and scanf will only return 1 because this first 127 characters, that'll pull in 127 A's, but then it's going to expect a comma immediately after those 127 A's. It's not going to find it, and then it's just going to error out and fail to match the rest. So var name would have been filled in with 127 A's, but var val will be just left alone, and so it's going to retain its current value. But the important thing is, it's going to get in there, like s scanf returns 1, it matched var name. It's going to get in here, and length is going to be increased by the overall tenth length, which was the string length, which was 256 times 2 plus the comma plus 1, so that's 514. So it's going to be incrementing too far ahead in this, and then subsequent writes to the temp buffer that are using this temp index of lang formatting is going to be incorrect. So it's going to be skipping forward too far and there's going to be a bunch of uninitialized data. So we'll see that visualized in a second, but you know, this is important to just go back to the original, write up the original finding. You know, he mentioned that the code also continues if just one element matches the s scanf. So the if statement was saying if nothing, you know, if it assumed if two things match, it wanted to say, it was essentially saying if not zero, because zero is the error case, and they just want to say, okay, well, if it's non-zero, then it must have succeeded. And also I'd note that our AI overlord specifically gave us an example of two format specifiers where only one of them matched and scanf will return one. So let's look at our stack and try to create a visualization for this. These are all the local variables. If we naively assumed the compiler didn't like move those around, then they would look something like this. There's a pointer, there's 248 bytes not to scale, and the other stuff. But we're only going to care about this temp and these var name and var value arrays. So let's go ahead and make it so that it focuses just on that. Okay, here's our code. Here's our stack view. And so after this right here, after these percent %c, percent %c, percent %c's, these are going to be the values. So that first one is ff, this one is fa, this one is 2, 3, and this one is 0. 
So great, we've got that stuff there. Now let's focus on this for loop. So we said 256 comma 256 for A's. So the temp lang is for 514. So 256 times two is 512 plus one plus the comma is one. And so 514. Down here, it's temp length, which is 4 plus 514 is 518 less than 2042. Yes, it is. So it gets into the scanf. And then the scanf is going to successfully pull in 127 A's into var name. And then it's going to fill that up and it's going to null terminate it. And I just didn't want to animate all this out. So we'll just say that's 127 A's. But then it's going to fail to fill in var val and it's just going to leave it alone and so it'll still just have this empty string of a single null character. All right, now let's follow along, follow the bouncing eyes. So this character is going to be put in as a percent %c interpolation into temp at lang. At this point, length hasn't incremented, so it's length of 4, so index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's going to be placed right there. Move the eyes forward. We're going to copy in the var name. So boom, that's all those A's, 127 with the null terminator. Then we're going to pull in this value. This happens to be 1. That goes next. And then this var val was never actually changed, and so it's just going to get an empty string. Now, I didn't really dwell on the internals of MSN printf, so I don't really know whether it's actually going to copy the null there or just skip it. But in either case, the point is going to be the same about where the actual uninitialized data leakage occurs. Because after it gets through that, we've got this lang plus equal temp lang, but temp lang was that giant 518. So even though only one 127 byte or 128 byte buffer could be copied in, it's going to act as if the full 518 bytes were copied in and consequently set length too far forward and then down here, temp of lang is using len as an index into temp, and that means that these interpolations are going to occur somewhere randomly up here. Well, not randomly, just somewhere displaced up here. I randomly chose where to place it on my diagram. We've moved forward too far, and now there's this big gap of uninitialized space that is ultimately going to be used in the writing out over the network. Again, this is a for loop of many possible telnet-t type options. Therefore, if we ran through this one more time, we would get another instance like this, FF, FA, 23, blah, 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 a bunch of A's, and then another big gap followed by those terminating characters. So all of this is going to go out over the network with these uninitialized stack data from the temp buffer included. So that's not great because you're connecting to a Telnet server, and Telnet is a plain text protocol, which means that not only are you sending this uninitialized data about your stack out onto the network to the server you're connecting to, but also to anyone who happens to be able to sniff the network that you're on. So maybe that leads to disclosure of secrets. Maybe this is being used in the context of libcurl in some particular application, and then an attacker finds a way to you know, send an exploit back at the application, and they use this leaked data to know something about it. Doesn't really matter. The important thing is you don't want to be doing this. You don't want to be leaking uninitialized data out over the network. So now just uh, another one of these asides. You may or may not have seen this. Depends on how the, um, the class examples are ordered and what order you take them in. But I was searching for a stack buffer overread. And we see this is not actually a buffer overread. This is, uh, this is kept in bounds via these size of checks. So it's not overreading past the end of temp. And all of this just means that I did not do a good enough job of carefully reading this. I was looking for keywords like information disclosure and stack-based buffer, and I didn't pay enough attention that this was not actually over-reading. So, oh well, I'm angry, but you gotta move on. So what was the fix for this? Well, the fix was adding a check to see whether or not both of these things actually matched, right? We wanna make sure that both of those match. So if it's two and only two, then we will continue on. But is there a problem there? I want you to think about it, answer the question on the website, and come back and watch the next video.